Here is Pope Pius's decree of 1930 on women's dress code with modesty published on Jan 12, 1930. Those who are materialistic and worldly may have taught you that whenever you leave the house you have to prepare for a fashion show, one that will show off what you have and get attention from others. While there is nothing wrong with taking care of your looks, be wary of crossing the line and inviting lust from men instead. This is also applicable for men on the other side. I'll be doing a video with regards to proper dressing for men. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 we read, But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Remember, being the reason for fornication or adultery in itself is a mortal sin. Four hundred years ago, our Blessed Mother, under the title of Our Lady of Good Success, warned Mother Mariana of Jesus that in the 20th century there would be very little innocence in children nor modesty in women. A hundred years ago, she revealed a little St. Jacinta of Fatima that certain fashions would be introduced that would offend our Lord very much and that more souls would go to hell for sins of the flesh than for any other reason. Here is a papal decree concerning modesty by His Holiness Pope Pius XI, published as on 12th of January 1930. Please note that we do have a standard to confirm to. Let's read into it. By virtue of his supreme apostolate, whereby the universal church is founded by a divine institution, our most holy lordship, Pope Pius XI, never tires of reiterating the words of St. Paul that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women with, who profess godliness. Frequently, when the occasion has presented itself, the same holy pontiff has reproved and bitterly condemned immodesty of dress pervasively introduced into use these days amongst Catholic women and girls. Point number one. May parish priests, especially, and preachers when the occasion presents itself, according to the words of St. Paul, demand, reprove, beseech, and rebuke women to wear cloths that redolent of modesty and such other things as are the ornament and vanguard of virtue, and may they warn parents not to permit their children to wear unseemly dress. Number two, parents being ever mindful of the most awesome obligation which binds them of caring firstly and foremostly for the moral and religious education of their children are to apply particular diligence that their daughters be firmly grounded in Christian doctrine and that those same daughters also zealously foster in their souls by words and example the love of virtues of modesty and chastity, may parents also, in imitation of the Holy Family, busy themselves about so ordering and governing their family that each and every individual within the family has a cause and incentive to love and guard modesty. 3. Let those same parents prohibit their children from public athletic events and gymnastic competitions or at least if their daughters must be involved in them, take care not to exhibit clothing, fully keeping up with modest actions, and their parents should never permit them to wear immodest clothing. Point number four, may the governesses of colleges and instructresses of schools strive so to imbue the souls of young women with the love of modesty that these same young women are led efficaciously to modesty of dress. Point number five. 
may those same governesses and instructresses with no exception even to their own mothers forbid admission to colleges and schools to such women as wear unseemly clothing and once admitted if they fail to come to their senses dismiss them 6 let not religious according to the letters given by the sacred congregation concerning religious on august 13 1928 admit young women into their colleges schools or a terrace or gymnasia who do not observe a christian manner of dress or if they have already been admitted and if they don't tolerate those who do not observe a christian manner of dress ask them to leave may they moreover take special pains in the education of their female students so that the love of christian modesty and holy reserve take deep root in their hearts point number 7 May pious associations of women be established and fostered organizations which by their counsel example and deed set before themselves the goal of checking the abuse of dress which is not consistent with the dictates of Christian modesty as well as the goal of promoting purity of morals and modesty of dress 8 into the pious associations of women let not those women be admitted who put on immodest clothing and once admitted if afterwards they commit a sin in this regard and come not to their senses when admonished may be expelled as well number 9 women and girls who wear immodest clothes are to be prohibited from holy communion and from the office of sponsor in the sacraments of baptism and confirmation and in certain cases they are to be prohibited even from entry into the church point number 10 when feasts occur throughout the year which supply a particular opportunity to inculcate christian modesty and especially feasts of the blessed virgin mary may parish priests of pious associations and heads of catholic societies not fail by means of the sermon for that occasion to recall and encourage women to a Christian manner of dress. Every year on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, let special prayers in all the cathedrals and parish churches be made, and where possible, may timely exhortation be given to the people in the church. Number 11. May diocesan councils discussed in a declaration of the Holy Office of March 22 1918 in a spirit of vigilance and at least once a year openly deal with finding ever more suitable means and methods of effectively giving counsel on feminine modesty secondly post notices on doorways and inside church the requirements of proper dress along with head coverings and demand that these regulations to be followed thirdly leave out brochures and other means of literature teaching and warning of the sin of immodesty there is one card titled sin most displeasing to god and women relating the story of the woman damned to hell fourthly post notices in the bulletin on a weekly basis and do not forget first of all teach modesty and proper dress code in the sermons Silence implies consent. And the last point in the decree, point number 12, to which point may salutary action effectively and safely lead? May bishops and other local ordinaries keep this sacred congregation informed every third year together with a report on religious institution given of our own accord in letters in the Catholic world on June 29, 1923. even concerning the condition of things and the state surrounding feminine manner of dress and concerning works carried out in accordance with the rule of this instruction here is a reference to the mary like standards for modesty in dress as laid down in conjunction with the pope's decree on modesty in dressing for women and girls applicable since 1930 but unfortunately not followed to this day 
A dress cannot be called decent which is cut deeper than two fingers breadth under the pit of the throat which does not cover the arms at least to the elbows and scarcely reaches a bit beyond the knees furthermore dresses of transparent materials are improper there are eight points of which we are going to read point number 1 mary like is modest without compromise like mary christ's mother point number 2 Mary like dresses have sleeves extending at least to the elbows and skirts reaching below the knees. Point number 3. Mary like dress requires full coverage for the body, chest, shoulders and back, except for a cut out above the neck not exceeding 2 inches below the neckline, in front and in back and a corresponding 2 inches on the shoulders. 4. Mary like dresses do not admit as modest coverage transparent fabrics. like laces and nets or gandy nylons etc unless sufficient backing is added however however their moderate use of trimmings is acceptable mary like dresses do not admit the use of improper flesh colored fabrics point number 6 mary like dresses conceal rather than reveal the figure of the wearer they do not unduly emphasize the parts of the body point number 7 Mary like dresses provide full coverage even after the jacket the cape or the stole are removed. Point number 8 slacks or jeans are not to be worn to church. They are strictly forbidden. In Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 we read A woman shall not be clothed with man's apparel neither shall a man use a woman's apparel. for he that doeth these things is abominable before god do you want to be an abomination in a book written on saint pio we read about a woman who sold pans in a retail store in vancouver canada and she went to confession to padre pio in italy and was refused absolution padre pio commanded her to return home to canada and dispose of all her stock not to give any of those items to people who might wear them and if she wanted his absolution she could come back to italy and receive it only after she had ruthlessly carried out his orders was she then absolved mary like fashions are designed to conceal as much of the body as possible rather than revealing this would automatically eliminate such fashions as tight fitting slacks or jeans sweaters shorts and shorts which do not reach down at least to the knees sheer blouses and sleeveless dresses to be included these mary like standards that be read a while ago are a guide to instill a sense of modesty women and girls who follow these standards and who look to mary as their ideal and model will have no problem of modesty in dress she who follows these standards will not ever be the occasion of sin or a source of embarrassment or shame to others do not ever compromise my dear sisters in jesus our god is faithful and he sees the beauty inside you you cannot serve two masters at the same time god bless you